Good evening. I'm, I'm Dr. Francis J. Kelly, the Grand Knight of St. John the Matholic Council in Hyattsville, Maryland, and a past faithful navigator of the Archbishop Michael J. Curley Assembly in College Park, Maryland. And tonight we're bringing you a program about Clyde Cowan, Catholic scientist. We are the Knights of Columbus in the Maryland area here, and we're very pleased to bring this program having to do with a famous scientist who passed away in 1974, is Professor Clyde Cowan from the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. Our guests today are the widow of, of Professor Cowan, Betty Cowan, and his son, George. And I'd like to now ask George, why at this time, George, are we so interested in the life of Professor Cowan? Well, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded this year to two scientists, uh, Dr. Marvin Pearl of Stanford in California for the discovery of the tau lepton in 1975, and to Dr. Frederick Rhinus of UC Irvine in California as well for his co-discovery of the neutrino. And he co-discovered the neutrino in 1956 with my father. Clyde Cowan, uh, and the Nobel Prize is not awarded posthumously. And had my father been alive this year, uh, he would be one of the recipients of the Nobel Prize in Physics for 1995. And this explains some of the interest. Now, this is a very interesting thing. I also um, am associated with Professor Callan in a certain way because I did my PhD thesis at the Catholic University when he was there and it was on the uh, two neutrino reactions which I calculated the cross-section for and Professor Callan was uh, kind enough to be a reader on my PhD thesis and uh, was also uh, nice enough to pose with me on a photograph at, at the graduation which you know, the photograph you'll be seeing right soon. Anyway, so I'm very pleased to have tonight our, our fine guests, uh, Mrs. Cowan and her son George. And I'd like to, uh, although uh, the neutrino is a very interesting uh, scientific phenomenon and particle, and there are about 10 to the eighth neutrinos from the sun supposedly <laughs> passing through every cubic se uh, square centimeter of our bodies yeah. every second, uh, we won't go into that too much, but instead we'll discuss the faith of Professor Callan, because he always was a very, very kind and uh, understanding professor at Catholic U. I had many interesting discussions with him, and but uh, their faith is much better known to his family, and I thought we would discuss that, his history of his family and the faith of Professor Callan. So I'd like to introduce Betty here, and uh, Betty can tell you about the courtship uh, and the, the circumstances of their, of their uh, wedding. Well, it was a very short courtship. Um, I'm f I, I met him in October, and we were married the following following January, so it was very quick. But um, I guess it was because he was such a kind person and such a an interesting person that that's what started the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. And we were married. We met in '42 in October, and we were married in the end of January, 1943. And I I claim to be the first. G.I. Bride, first British bride married to American. I haven't proved it, but that's what I'm claiming. That's about uh, 50 years ago or so? 1943. So it's more it's than 50 long, years ago. a long, long time ago, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And after, after you were married uh, in Britain, you, you had... Uh, well, our first show? child was born in 1944 in, in March, and um, she's still living. And do you want me to... Go yeah. on with the whole thing. Yeah, well, yeah. My, um, after that, between the years 1944 and 1964, we had 10, I had 10 children. And only three survived infancy. The first one, the seventh one born in 1954, and the 10th one born in 1964. All the others uh, died as a result of the RH negative factor. We discovered during that time that um, Clyde was what they call heterozygous. He had both negative and positive genes in his blood. Therefore, some of them, were, the po positive children died, 
but we ended up with two more negative children. Mm -hmm. And also you adopted some children too. Well, during that time we adopted two children. We adopted David in 1950, uh, and he died just before his fourth birthday of, uh, in a flu epidemic in New Mexico. Uh, after that we adopted Michael, who lived to be 19, and uh, he died in an automobile accident in 1972 out here in Oli. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, his dad died in 1974. And I think maybe the, the death of the children really, really told on him, and that was, that was very hard. But we loved children, and we kept going, and look, we got <laughs> magic children. Mm. You, uh, after um, you got married, when you were married, uh, was Clyde uh, a, a practicing scientist at that oh. time? Oh, yes, he was. Mm -hmm. yes. And he was a practicing Catholic, and I was, a, I was a Church of England. I was not a Catholic then. But I think his influence, his life, had me become a convert in 1953. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that uh, his parents also uh, were converts to the faith. Yes, his mother became a Catholic when she was 16. And then uh, she met his dad, and I guess they were courting, and he asked her to marry him. And she said, no, I want to marry a Catholic. So he went away for a year. And he came back a year later and said, well, I'm a Catholic now. Will you marry me? And they got married. That's marvelous. And his, his mother is still alive, is that? She's still living. She's 99 years old. She lived here in Montgomery County until last year. And she's very bright and with it. Mm -hmm. And now they've taken her to St. Louis to live in um, uh, a retirement home, really for parents of nuns. And uh, she's there with her two daughters who also live in Missouri. Mm -hmm. 